we now have a convergence of several technologies that are making it possible to understand how the brain works. And this includes uh, you know, a variety of techniques uh, like uh, electroencephalography, magnetoencephalography, uh, near infrared Im functional near infrared imaging, uh, functional magneto resistance imaging, uh, and so on. The challenges that w many people uh, like myself are trying to address are how do we decode uh, the information that we get about brain activity uh, from physical sensors that we're developing. So what we have recently done is to develop sensors that will measure um, electric fields around the brain. And we're also developing techniques to do this, uh, to, to do this with high precision. So the brain actually emits electromagnetic signals. And you can detect brain activity using electrical measurements like in electrical electroencephalography. You can also detect magnetic fields of the brain in a technique called magnetoencephalography. With techniques like ours, which are becoming more precise, uh, what they can do is they can uh, lead to more precise information on the nature and type of activity uh, in the brain. So the systems that we're trying to build uh, are very high density measurements around the scalp. And then we're combining them with uh, a uh, host of software tools to try to reconstruct brain activity. For instance, we have recently shown uh, using some new sensors that we developed uh, that we can uh, uh, achieve classification accuracies of almost 90 percent uh, using our system. So the idea is that, you know, a subject is shown different uh, images. Uh, it, it could be words and then there are some um, uh, spurious words that are inserted. And these then, and the question is, can the uh, person identify these? Or what are the processes that occur when that happens? This type of classification system, uh, if we could completely decode it, could lead uh, to better uh, applications, for instance, in brain computer interfaces, where if we can actually decode the responses and the thinking of the person then uh, to, to particular stimuli, uh, then we can then uh, create systems which will actually interact with the person uh, to achieve you know, whatever outcomes uh, that are necessary or that are desired. Uh, we are interested in a variety of problems using our sensors. Uh, in collaboration with uh, a large number of uh, other neuroscientists and neurologists. For instance, in epilepsy, the type of precision functional brain imaging system that we are uh, building will uh, lead to much better localization of the source of epileptic seizures also of potentially of epileptic pathways, seizure pathways. Now these are all very important for say the clinician uh, because you know when they try to, um, when they do brain surgery to, they typically you know cut out parts, parts of the brain in order to reduce the seizures and naturally the, you want to do it as precisely as you can. So you need to know as precisely as you can the source of electrical activity. The technologies that are emerging today uh, are also 
will lead to new and better monitoring of, for instance, seizures for patients, even um, silent uh, seizures uh, and, uh, and things like that, so that that will uh, improve the quality of life of these patients also. There are other applications that we're looking at. For instance, how do you uh, understand how people respond to visual stimuli of various kinds? Can you do pattern recognition? And for instance, when you're looking at scenes, when there is a, um, uh, an event that is occurring, uh, do people rec how do people recognize that? And this is all manifest, it mas manifesting itself through brain activity. The key point of what we're trying to do is, of course, that it is non-invasive uh, and has, is very quick, uh, ha can do it on fast time scales compared, for instance, to functional MRI, uh, which has great precision but is very slow. And we're trying to do it in a portable manner, which is very important because you know you want it, uh, you don't want it to be limited to simply uh, clinical settings. You want it to be ambulatory so that it gives you can integrate it into a person's day-to-day -day activities. Some things that are going to be feasible today, uh, in the very near future, are will be quite amazing, you know. We will be, in fact, we can even communicate with our thoughts through the use of technology. Uh, already, there has been a recent demonstration of two rats who have, been, who have communicated with each other through sensors. The same thing is certainly feasible uh, with humans. And I think, I mean, there, one can see a future where, in fact, our minds will be connected uh, through the cloud, the, 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 the uh, data cloud, because these sensors will talk to the iPhones, and then they will then talk to the cloud, which can then, of course, communicate with whoever you wish it. It, it could send a signal, uh, a warning to the neurologist who is looking out for a patient. It could go into you know, devices to control them. These are all going to be feasible uh, in the very near future. The biggest challenge that we face here is in trying to decode what is significant activity compared with what is noise. Here is really where uh, we, where the, it'll take a lot of research, but this can be done through sort of careful design of experiments and trying to decode. Uh, in our case, we're looking at electrical activity. Uh, and so how do you, you know, hone in on s specific uh, activity related to specific functions. This is the major challenge that uh, we're all uh, facing in this field. Uh, and I think as the measurements improve, as the studies are better designed, we will have better and better understanding of this. So what is, what we do is to record many hundreds of signals and then analyze them, and then correlate them to particular uh, activities or brain states. Uh, well, some well, there are some well-known parameters, uh, you know, like alpha, beta, gamma waves, which are typically which are associated with various functions that they can increase. For instance, uh, uh, drowsiness can increase. Uh, alpha waves, for instance, any even concentration can affect these patterns and they can enhance one component or the other. So looking at the spectral patterns of the signals, you can identify, uh, you can correlate it to specific activities. 
and uh, you can correlate visual stimuli to certain patterns. Um, you can co correlate tactile or touch to certain patterns. So all of these have signatures in the electrical activity, uh, which you can then try to, to decode uh, and relate to what the stimulus is. There are many improvements that we can see. For instance, I think we, we will have much better and clearer maps of brain activity, which will be achieved uh, through a variety of uh, approaches, not just through electrical activity as we're doing, but also we're using nanotechnologies and nanomaterials to probe uh, brain processes, uh, it, using them as contrast agents, and uh, coupled with other measurements like MRI. We will get better and better definition from a variety of these uh, methods on brain imaging and brain activity. When we think of invasive in, the, in regard to the brain, typically are talk, thinking of opening the skull and implanting electrodes, uh, which is a very invasive process. The other way is to inject uh, materials, which can then be coupled with appropriate activities, uh, you know, which, can, uh, specific, which can lead to specific signals. Uh, which can then be detected to trump something like uh, magnetic MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. That is not nearly as invasive as the, you know, direct surgical insertion of electrodes. But all of these are, are occurring. Today we are at an unprecedented moment in understanding brain activity. And over the next decade or so, our understanding of how the brain works, how it responds to various uh, stimuli, even how we think, how our emotions express themselves. These will all, will get a better and better understanding. And this is really a, a unique moment, which has occurred through not just a single technology, but a whole multitude of technologies that have converged and lead to this really unique moment.